video I'm going to be talking about the absolute value function and all of the ways that you can translate it. So I'm just going to begin with the most basic or I'd call it the parent absolute value function which is y equals the absolute value of x. So it's very simple to see and all I have to do is make a table to see that the absolute value of 0 is 0, the absolute value of 1 is 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is also positive 1. And you'd get this V-shaped graph. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the uh, three things that we could do to change this graph, to transform it. So. I call this the skeleton equation of any absolute value. Notice we have the absolute value, x is inside of it, and I have this minus h. So this h value will move the graph left or right. right? So if it says x minus a number, it's going to move it to the right. And if it says x plus a number, it's going to move it that many spaces to the left. Okay, so that's always the first thing that I notice. The next thing I also see here is this plus k, and that's going to move this graph either up or down. And if it says plus some number, it's going to move it up that amount, and if it says minus, it's going to move it down. And then lastly, we have this a value, and I want you to also, you know, kind of go along with the pattern here. Either these numbers are positive or negative. And if A is positive, our V is going to be opening up. And if A is negative, our graph is going to be opening down like this. But more specifically, it's the rate of change, or in this case, slope, right? So the slope of the, each side of this, this function or this graph is going to be constant, right? So it's really a slope. And uh, it's going to control how fast that line goes up or how slowly it goes up or down. So let's do a few examples here. So example one, let's do y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. So I know that this is a graph that has been moved, let's see, this is right 1, this is up 2, and there's really a 1 out here for our a value, so it looks like it's the same slope as the original absolute value function. So I'm just going to move this thing right 1, up 2. There's the vertex of the absolute value. And we're going to keep the slope of the right side of this 1, and the left side is obviously a negative 1. And we have our graph. Let's try another example. So for example 2, let's do y equals 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2. And notice that we have nothing with this x inside. We don't have x plus or x minus a number. So this thing's not moving left or right. However, it is going to be moving down to. Right, so our vertex is now at 0, negative 2. And this guy right here, this 3, is our slope. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, over 1, in the other direction as well. So this is a steeper absolute value graph. And that one's done. Now, and these don't get much more complicated. I'll throw in a little bit um, of a different type of transformation in a minute. Uh, it's not as obvious. Let's just do one more. We haven't done a negative a value yet, so might as well try one of these. So here, let's see, x plus 2. That plus 2 is going to move this graph left 2. This negative a value means it's going to be upside down, and our slope is going to be 1 half. So left 2, there's my vertex at negative 2, 0. 
and we're opening down so this slope is telling me to go down one and over two so I'll do that in both directions this is just a wider absolute value function okay and I promise you to give you something a little bit weirder how about this y equals the absolute value of 4x plus 12 minus 5 so why is this one more uh, more strange or stranger I guess uh, than any of the ones we've done notice that all the ones we've done have just have an x right with a coefficient of 1 this has a coefficient of 4 so we would like it to look like the others so I really don't want this 4 here I can't just get rid of it but I am allowed to move it around so think about it like this I'm allowed to factor out a 4 which would leave me with the absolute value of 4 times the quantity x plus 3 and I still have my minus 5 on the outside and then I could say well the absolute value of 4 is really being multiplied with the absolute value of x plus 3 and the absolute value of 4 is just 4 so I think we have our new a value and we see how this thing has been moved to the left 3 and we always knew it was moved down 5 but now everything else is clear I can now do a quick sketch here so I moved left 3 down 5 so my vertex is at negative 3, negative 5 and I have a slope of 4 just like that I just want to point out something else you know when we do analysis of these functions we often care about what the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts are and notice that in all the other graphs they were very clear except for maybe number two um, but I, I would like to find the x and y-intercepts for this graph because neither of them are clear to me right now so I'm just gonna kind of review with you the strategy that you would use to find x and y-intercepts on any function so, let me just go to the next screen here. So, I'm going to use my 4 times the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 5 version of this, this equation. And I would like to find the y-intercept. Okay, so if you ever want to find the y-intercept, it's very simple. I want you to evaluate with x equal to 0, right? So, y equals what when x is 0? So I'm going to plug in a 0 here. I'm just going to be doing some arithmetic, it looks like. Um, absolute value of 3 stays as a 3, so this is really 12 minus 5. So I got 7, so our y-intercept is at 0, 7. So now I can, if I wanted to go back to this graph over here, I can label that at 7. And if you want to find the x-intercept next, um, well, all x-intercepts have something in common, and that's that the y-value is 0. So I'm going to now substitute 0 in for y and solve for x. So let's see, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4, so I have 5 fourths equals the absolute value of x plus 3. So now the absolute value, notice, is equal to this positive 5 fourths, as it should be, right? It should be a positive number. So the inside might be positive 5 fourths, but the inside also has a chance of being negative 5 fourths. So I'm going to solve both of these equations. Now, right here, I, you know, most of us would write minus 3, but notice that I'm going to have to combine it with this fraction over here. So instead of writing 3, I'm going to write it as 12 fourths, right? That's the same thing as 3. Now I can just combine them right now and get negative 7 fourths. So we have an x-intercept at negative 7 fourths, comma, 0. And then let's see the same thing over here. 
negative 5 fourths minus 12 fourths is negative 17 fourths. So negative 17 fourths comma 0 is our second x-intercept, right? Now, I just want to approximate these. Negative 7 fourths, you know, that's a little bit more than, you know, technically, they're, they're negative numbers. You know, it's very close to negative 2. It's in between negative 1 and negative 2. How about that, right? So look at our graph over here. That's in between negative 1 and negative 2. And the other x-intercept, negative 17 over 4, that's got to be really close to negative 4, right? It's a little bit, it's closer to negative 4 than it is to negative 5, but it's in between both of those. My graph, let's see, move my negative 4 here. There's negative 5. That looks pretty good. So we have our x and y intercepts. In order to gain credit for your warm-up in class tomorrow, or whenever your next class period is, I would like you to write on the back of your warm-up what your favorite fruit is. See you then.